All right, this is the first video on Japanese expansion, the actual events, 31 to 41, although this video or the next three are really only going to cover the Manchurian Crisis, um, the onset of the Second Sino-Japanese War, and that's really about it, international responses to those things. And this video in particular will focus on the Japanese takeover of Manchuria, the Manchurian Crisis, or the Mukden Incident. So on September 18, 1931, a bomb exploded on the South Manchurian Railway outside the city of Mukden in Manchuria. It wasn't a big explosion. It didn't even prevent the trains from using the railway for the rest of the day after the debris was cleared. But the explosion was conveniently located next to a Japanese soldier garrison, the Kwantung Army, um, as that unit was known which was actually there as they were assigned to protect the railway. Quickly, the Kwantung Army blamed Chinese rebels in the area for setting the explosives and began operations against the Chinese military um, in that region. Hundreds of Chinese troops were killed. Later on, it was revealed that in reality, the bomb had been set by two Kwantung Army officers as sort of a pretense as to the Japanese uh, government was taken aback by the news of the explosion and was pretty surprised. Uh, there was no official declaration of war, which will become something that will somewhat of a trend in these um, maneuvers. And the explosion is officially referred to as an incident in Japan. The government actually ordered the Kwantung Army to fall back and stop advancing through Manchuria, but the army refused these orders and kept moving, easily taking territory to the delight of the more right-wing hardliners in the Japanese government. There was even discussion among that group of a coup by the military if the Japanese government tried anything to stop these armies in Manchuria. So, with the government's hands kind of tied, Japanese and Korean units Korean units, because Korea was a Japanese territory at the time, moved north and west throughout Manchuria, securing land in the name of the Japanese Empire, and supposedly to help the Manchurians in their fight for independence from China and local warlords. There was relatively little fighting. Chiang Kai-shek told his troops not to fight the Japanese as they were better equipped and would surely win. Again, he was saving his resources for the communists in China. So by February of 1932, only one province in Manchuria was not occupied by Japanese forces. Japan began calling the area Manchukuo and said it was an independent state that they had helped establish for the Manchu people who wanted to separate from the chaotic China. This is a piece of propaganda that shows the Japanese, the Manchu, and the Chinese all living in harmony in Manchukuo. They put in place the last Qing emperor, who was Manchu himself, Puyi. Uh, they brought him back. He had lost power as a boy. They brought him back to rule over the new country of Manchukuo. Um, and Manchukuo actually, you know, was an official state. It had sports teams applied to be part of the League of Nations. The League denied that, which is sort of an indication of the feelings that the world had about this newly created state, which were not totally unfounded. Um, as we now know, it was pretty much a puppet state ruled by the Japanese rather than the Manchu people. Most countries outside of Japan were unaware of the conflict in the government and instead assumed that Japan as a government was responsible for pushing its armies to invade and be aggressive. They didn't realize there was a divide at all. They saw it all as one thing. Um, however, most countries did little in response to the Manchurian crisis. The depression had just started. Nobody really had resources to dedicate it to stopping this. It was also in Asia. They weren't as concerned with that. There was also some feeling that the USSR was the bigger threat. And if Japan wanted to snuggle up next to them um, and eventually wage war against them, so be it. Besides, most countries thought this was a matter for the League of Nations. This is just a map of countries that officially recognize Manchukuo as an independent state and not just part of China. The Manchurian crisis was the first major test for the League of Nations. They began by appointing a commission headed by Sir Lytton of Great Britain to investigate the incident. 
The report the Lytton Commission gave, the Lytton Report, was submitted in October of 1932, about one year after the invasion. The Lytton Report said China was indeed chaotic and that Japan had actually helped pacify and establish some order in Manchukuo, but they also said the invasion was done under false pretenses and also 90% of Manchuria was Chinese ethnically, not Manchu, and therefore didn't really care about getting their independence. The commission recommended Japan fall back to its original position and Manchukuo uh, could remain an independent state. The following fe February in 1933, the League voted to condemn Japan. Only one member voted against that, Japan. The speech they gave before walking out of this meeting asked for the first nation without sins in the area of imperialism to cast the first stone and stated that China was an area of chaos with many governments and languages. Only Manchukuo was peaceful, they claimed. In reality, Japan had secretly begun committing some war atrocities against the local people. They had begun establishing bacterial weapons testing sites in Manchukuo, like the infamous Unit 731. These sites tested on Chinese subjects and Manchu subjects all kinds of chemical and bacterial weapons, including the bubonic plague. It's pretty horrific. After the vote, Japan walked out of the League and withdrew, suffering no major repercussions. The League had failed its first test and showed that international aggression would not be condemned with force. This would be a disastrous decision in the 1930s, as Italy invaded Abyssinia and Germany began expanding in Europe. The international response to the Manchurian crisis outside of the League of Nations was pretty much non-existent. In Russia, there was no time or resources to dedicate to the Japanese threat on its eastern border. They were in the middle of undergoing massive industrialization at the hands of Joseph Stalin, and Japan had tried to reassure the USSR by basically saying it would not interfere with Soviet railway lines in Manchuria. Regardless, Stalin eventually sold the lines anyway to cut their losses and focus on industrialization and the um, Western Front or Europe. Back in China, Chiang Kai-shek continued to focus his attention on the communists rather than the Japanese in Manchukuo. However, this proved to be unsustainable. By March 1933, Japanese armies were beginning to enter China from Manchukuo, crossing the borders periodically, testing the Japanese tolerance to these incursions. Chiang Kai-shek halted these incursions by signing a treaty, the Treaty of Tonggu or the Tonggu Truce, in May, which recognized Japanese authority in Manchukuo and parts of North China and set up a neutral zone between the Japanese-held areas and the Chinese government. Within Japan, the crisis had the effect of furthering the country on the road to militaristic expansionism. The Japanese prime minister that actually helped negotiate the Tongu Treaty was assassinated by right-wing radicals as a result. They thought he was selling the Japanese people and the armies out. After leaving the League, Japan's budget for the military went from a third to a half of the overall budget. This also meant that in Japan, rationing began with people giving up scrap metal, etc., the police state really ramped up in Japan with 60,000 people being arrested as thought criminals over the next three years. And in May of 1932, the prime minister uh, who was assassinated by young, uh, the, the, the ultra-nationalist, um, that same group also talked about possibly kidnapping Charlie Chaplin, who was visiting Japan at the time, hoping it would provoke a war with the U.S., uh, the assassins of the Prime Minister were actually put on trial and found that they were given lighter sentences. They were just had their sentences eventually commuted because so many petitions poured in from Japanese people calling them patriots for trying to help the army. Following the Manchurian crisis, Japan, found now, Japan now found itself isolated and alone in the world. They had left the League of Nations and were seen by, with suspicion by most of the, the world. Some in the Western world actually feared that the open-door policy in China was being violated by Japan, but didn't desire to intervene militarily. In 1932, the U.S. waded into the crisis in Manchuria by issuing a statement known as the Stimson Doctrine. 
This said America refused to recognize borders established during wartime. It was really aimed at Japan, but it had no real effect. Isolated, Japan turns toward, turned towards the authoritarian state of Nazi Germany as a potential ally against the Western world. They found common ground in their anti-communist stance and their rejection of Western values and beliefs. <laughs> 